Hi, it's Megan. Um, I have to admit, I wasn't super interested in a lot of the Gwen Stefani collection from Urban Decay, and um, it's not because I don't like Gwen Stefani or Urban Decay, I like both of them, I just, I don't know, didn't think it looked that special. And then um, last week, I just decided, if you know me, you'll know this is really unusual, I decided to go to the Urban Decay store to check out the collection, which it's a drive from where I am, but the nice thing about Southern California is if you hit the right time, uh, the traffic's non-existent, you can actually move quite fast, and I hate going to stores, I just... To me, if it's not available online, um, it's just not worth getting. But for some reason, I just wanted to check out this collection, and I wanted, I think, just to get out and do something and drive and whatever. Um, and I was really impressed. So I, sadly, for my low buy, and I swear, after what I bought in January uh, and the videos I do for that, I swear the low buy is really going to be a low buy. I bought. Yes, all eight of the lipsticks. Um, so that's what this video is for. And I'm changing the format of videos like this just to see if it works. So you can give me feedback where I'm going to go through the lipsticks one by one. And I'm going to do it a little bit closer in so you can see the lipsticks on. And instead of actually changing them on camera, I'm going to apply them on camera but take them off off camera. So there are, in this collection, eight lipsticks which supposedly used the Revolution Lipstick Formula, although honestly I felt like they were overall, except for 714, which is a matte, I thought they were shinier. And I pulled out some of my Revolution lipsticks and compared them, and I felt like these just had a little extra sheen to them. And I looked at some of the reviewers and I saw like satin matte, satin matte, and I'd look at the lipstick and I'd say, mm, I'm not seeing satin matte. I mean, maybe shiny satin matte, that'll go with. So looking at, I know there aren't that many reviews out there, but looking at them, my reviews are slightly different because I felt slightly different about the collection overall than basically anybody else who has reviewed it. So that's just the way it goes. And then there's one ultra matte, which is 714. And uh, there's variants in the formula. So there are three shears, there are four shiny satin mattes, and then there is one matte, which really isn't shiny. And the matte is a little bit stiffer, and I felt the other seven were a little bit more substantive than the Revolution lipstick, as well as being a little bit shiny. And then the other thing that was odd about this collection, I kept running outside to look at my swatches, because when I applied them, I felt like a lot of them were, I don't want to say duochrome, because that's such an overused word, especially by me, but a lot of them had this real complexity that I didn't expect. And I couldn't quite explain, like looking at the swatches, what it was. So, what I have on my lips right now is, as you can see, almost like a sheer balm, which is ex girlfriend. But first, before I take it off and apply it on camera so you can see it, uh, these are $18. So, they cost a little bit less than the Revolution lipsticks, and they're 0.11 ounces. And the packaging is like this. And you open it up. And this is plastic. I don't like the packaging. I do like the fact that you have the lipstick tube. I like this better than the way the lipstick, the Revolution lipsticks come out. Um, I just I like applying them better this way. And uh, I'm not thrilled with, it's not that it feels cheap exactly, but it kind of a little bit does. But I'd rather, honestly, save the 3 or $4, I think it was a Revolution or 21 I can't remember exactly. I'd rather save the money and get the cheaper packaging, so I'm thrilled about that. And then the other thing to note, which is kind of cool, is that they have a little OD stamped on there. And uh, so before I start, the rest of my thoughts on the collection, um, they're really, really pretty. There isn't necessarily a wide variance sometimes among different of the reds, well, two in particular, I think, on me. Um, and they, I think, lean overall a little bit more neutral in tone, that middle end of the spectrum. But I actually really was impressed. Like I said, I had no interest in this collection, and then I buy all eight lipsticks. But I just like them enough, and I thought they were just so pretty. So I did it. And that's the way it goes. All right, now I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And like I said, I'd love to get feedback as to whether this is an effective way to do the videos or you like it the old way I was doing it. We'll do ex-girlfriend 
first. So the first shade is Ex-Girlfriend. And let me know if I should zoom in more on these or less. And... This is the only shade where I'm not going to put a little foundation to cover my natural lip color. And that's just because, um, first of all, it's a semi-sheer shade. It's quite... it picks up a lot of my natural lip color. And so I want you to see how my natural lip color is affecting it. So you can kind of figure out better for yourself how it's going to work on you. Um, and then also, I have to say, I don't think this one shows up as well on camera because I can kind of see it off on the side. I don't think this one shows up as well on camera as it does in real life. And this is the kind of shade I would say people are going to love... Or they're gonna hate, right? You either like these semi sheer nudes, high sheen, or you don't. And I do like it. I find that I lose a little bit of the definition on my top lip line. So this is the one. If I were tempted to buy one of the lip liners, this is the one I would buy the lip liner for. So this is what it looks like swatched. And they say it is a sheer nude rose with pink shimmer. It's a, definitely a wormy, a warm, warm rosy peach and it has kind of like a I don't know this one again has a there were a couple that had a little bit of a shift in the not quite a duochrome but it has like a gold and then a pink little shift outside in the color because it is slightly metallic it is slightly frosty but as you can see barely like this is not a high frost shade it just has a sheen a slight frost a slight shimmer and I can see little bits of what did I see peach pinky nude shimmery it has a gloss and the duochrome I actually saw a little bit of lilac as well just depending on the lighting that was hitting it so the wear time on this and actually the wear time on all of these I decided to put the video up faster instead of checking the wear time of all of them so I've worn at least all of them for an hour this is one of the few that doesn't stain I also think it doesn't have the best wear time. Um, I think about an hour is as long as I would go. And if I were to try to really wear this on like a daily basis, this one I might, I might do a lip liner under. It's beautiful, balmy nude that pretty much most people can wear because of that sheerness. But if you want it to last, I would put a liner. Okay, next one. Phone call is the next one, and it's another one of the shears. So there are three of the shears, and I messed up, and I took pictures of these based on how dark they looked in the tube before I'd swatched them, because you want to get the photo before you swatched. And then I mixed up plaid, which is the last of the shears, so that's going to be last in the video. And then um, there's two that I switched. I put Firebird before Wonderland, which in the swatches are opposite. So this is phone call. Right there. And this one is described as a sheer bright pink. And you can see that obviously, and I would say this with all except for ex-girlfriend, with all the shears, they are incredibly pigmented. And they're picking up the natural color of your lips, yes, but I don't know. They're so pigmented. And it have a beautiful shine, so I don't really notice my natural lip color, honestly, with this one. I described it as a vibrant, not super bright, deep hot pink carnation. It's kind of a warm rose pink. And uh, I can kind of see um, cool undertones. It's got a luminous sheen. It's like a pinker version of a fuchsia. And it's not quite as bright as a lot of shades like this. So this is phone call. Next we have Firebird. And this is the one that people have asked me the most questions about. So what do I think? That's what it looks like. Of all the shades, I think this is the sec one of the second, well, it's the second least flattering on me, maybe the least flattering. It is a brighter, 
but very beautiful. Not super, super, super bright, fuchsia-ish, but I think this one leans more to a pink fuchsia-ish as opposed to a super purple fuchsia-ish. And this one is the one that has that kind of beautiful duochrome effect to it. And when I was at the Urban Decay store, the SA and I both looked at it and it looked more like a blue undertone than a fully purple undertone. So like a blue lilac undertone with that duochrome thing going on as opposed to like a full purple, which is what I would expect from Fuchsia. And so it's described as a deep fuchsia cream. And there's that opacity to it, that translucency, which I think really, not opacity, that translucency that really makes your natural lip color kind of warm it up a little because it's cooler swatched, I think, than it is on my lips. It kind of warms it up a little bit since I have warmer lips. Um, my lip color is more warm. These two last a lot longer on me than does ex-girlfriend, and I also feel like I don't lose my top upper lip. This is a really pretty color. The other comments I had on this one, um, that blue shift, vibrant pink fuchsia, it's just, it's, it's something that, uh, it's kind of unusual, but it's something I've seen from Urban Decay or similar in the past. Now I'm trying to take out a little bit of my natural lip color because at this point we're getting to the shades that are starting to um, stain a little bit and then we're getting into reds. So the first one we're getting into is Wonderland. I have a smaller mirror too so I can do this perfectly. And the swatches, Wonderland and Firebird are reversed. I was surprised at how much I like this one. And again, I don't know if you can see on camera that beautiful, beautiful sheen. Um, so this is described as a dark pink red cream. And I would call it as kind of a fuchsia red. Um, you can definitely, again, see blue undertones in this one, which will make it a little bit cooler. Um, it's a medium to lighter version of red. And it has just that beautiful, beautiful sheen to it. What else did I write about it? I just said, um, this one is close to spiderweb and plaid. So that's why I did the switch. I, I don't know, I was just surprised at how much I like this one. I think it's a lot like the next one though. The next one is Spiderweb, so we do that in the one in the second. And again, you see just really beautiful, even coverage, that really pretty sheen. Spiderweb. This one still has a beautiful sheen to it, and it's more red and a little bit darker than our very beautiful Wonderland. Um, but I see a lot of similarity, so let's swatch it next to it. So you can see, this one's definitely pinker. It's kind of in the same family, but moving along the spectrum. And this one isn't quite as shiny, it's definitely more of a satin. So according to the brand, Spiderweb is a satin cream red, and it is a shiny satin cream red. It's a bright medium red, and it has kind of neutral to cool undertones, and it's mostly opaque. I also think it's a little bit more opaque than Wonderland, but again, just a really pretty color. Now we're at my favorite one, um, which is 714. 714 got, I don't know, some critiques online I read about it being a stiffer formula, and it is a stiffer formula. So this is it. But I still think it's not that stiff. To me, this is a creamier formula than something like Kat Von D, but it's, you know, it's a matte, and so it's going to be a little stiffer than some of the others. And it's noticeably stiffer. 
So that's what it looks like on. I just adore this shade. I've described a lot of mattes as being like crushed velvet. To me, this one is like crushed rose petals. And it's kind of a, what do they call it? They call it a bright red mega matte. But I see it as a kind of brightened, but not so bright, medium red, medium dark red with this warm orange coral undertone. And it has a little bit of a flatter finish than the rest. This one doesn't have that amazing sh sheen. But this is actually the one I wore back in the car from driving to the Urban Decay store. And this lasts flawlessly for a very, very long time. And the other comments I had about it were um, that it seems a little bit more coral in the undertone than in the orange, which makes it a little bit less harsh. And this was actually what one of the essays at the store was wearing at the same time when it was there. And it looked beautiful on her. She had dark hair, dark eyes, dark complexion, totally different, looked gorgeous on her. So I really like this one. This is my favorite. Two more to go. How am I holding up? Okay, so the next one we have is Rock Steady. And this technically should have come last, but oh well. This, by the way, was the first one to sell out on the Urban Decay website, and then the second one to sell out was Ex-Girlfriend. You can see the creamy, beautiful application. You can see that sheen, I hope, on the camera, although I don't know, because um, I can't tell when I'm shooting the videos. Uh, it's described as a deep wine red cream. Again, when they're talking about cream, I'm seeing shiny cream. And so this definitely is a darkened kind of burgundy red. I can see, um, I said it's a rich red. There's a little bit of a blueberry thing going on. I can almost see a little blackened. And this one was another one that led me running outside to see if I could see kind of different shifts in it. And I really couldn't, but that's what's so interesting about these. And it's just a really pretty one. This one, I mean, all the reds actually stain and the darker stain. The only one that doesn't stain is ex-girlfriend. Um, but it's just, it's a pretty, pretty color. All right, we're at our last one, and this one is plaid. This is one, another, the last of the shears. And I kind of can't tell what I think about this one. This one is described as a sheer deep berry. And so it's semi-opaque. It has kind of, a, again, like a lot of these, it has a cool fuchsia-ish feel to them. Um, overall, I think these definitely veer kind of to the cool to neutral with the exceptions being Ex-Girlfriend and 714. Maybe it's just because Gwen Stefani was the one who kind of was the inspiration behind this collection and so they're looking kind of at her what she would wear since that was what it was supposed to be kind of shades that she would live with and love and wear every day and, and all of that but this one is again for a sheer it's incredibly I don't know it almost looks opaque on because it's so deeply pigmented and um, what else did I put about this one I said a berry red and it has some similarities to both Spiderland and Wonderland, or Spiderweb and Wonderland. And uh, it wears, like the other shears, slightly less than the four that are more satinish. But it's a pretty shade. Anyway, those are my eight Urban Decay Gwen Stefani lipsticks. I just really thought they were pretty. So I'd love to get feedbacks, thoughts, suggestions. Um, let me know what you think about the camera angles and all that. I've never done a video like this one before. And any last thoughts I have on the collection? I said the shears, all of them have a high sheen. They're really beautiful shades. And um, very pigmented. Every single one of them except for Ex-Girlfriend is super, super, super pigmented. Thanks for watching and please subscribe on YouTube.